Hey guys, Carl Cooper here with On the Black, and I'm joined for my weekly chat with Dave Doyle of Mets Report. What's going on, Dave? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Disappointed we lost two out of three to Washington, but, you know, the highs and lows of this team, I guess it's the trademark of a 500 team. Yeah, inconsistency. Sweep uh, the Reds in four games in Cincy and then lose to a bad team in Washington. Right, right, right. Well, this is the first time we're talking since uh, the Mets traded Carlos Beltran, and so I wanted to get your thoughts on that trade. Um, you know, do you think that the Mets uh, got something good in return for Beltran? Do you think they should have got more, so on and so forth? I mean, what are your thoughts? I think they did about as well as they possibly could, and you know, I, I've seen a lot of reports from these uh, so-called analysts, whether it's you know CBS Sports or ESPN or. Uh, MLB Network, and pretty much everything I, I've read about that from the analysts has been favorable for the Mets, mm -hmm. that they got the uh, number six overall pick in the draft from two years ago, a pitcher, a starting pitcher. So, uh, you know, it seems like they did as well as they possibly could. So I, I have no bone to pick with Alderson on that. Yeah, and, I, and I, I agree with you. I mean, I guess it, the only thing I would say there, and this is just being picky, I mean, uh, the kid, he sounds like he's a really good prospect, but he is only in a ball right now. So uh, he's still a ways away uh, from being on this major league team and having really uh, any uh, impact, I, I would think. Yeah, I'm sure probably at least two years. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Now, you know, the Mets, uh, I guess they did what everyone thought that they would do. They, they traded Francisco Rodriguez. They traded Beltran. Are you surprised that they didn't make any other moves before the deadline? I am. I'm very surprised about that. Um, there's uh, not that they would get much back, but you know, there's other guys like Capuano and Burdak and Hairston and Harris mm -hmm. and some guys that had been talked about and in, uh, in tr trade rumors for what those are worth. But um, I, I am surprised. It, it almost kind of feels like Alderson went a little halfway on this. That. Uh, K-Rod and Beltran are gone, um, but there's a bunch of other guys that could have been gone, too, that they, they didn't go with. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't really know what they're trying to do. Are, are they trying to prove that they can be 500 this year? D does that really mean anything to anybody? I don't think so. Uh, so I, it feels like they went halfway to me. Yeah, and, you know, I, leading up to the deadline, we talked about this before, and, and I said to you before that I thought that Alderson would have a very tough decision as we got near the deadline as to whether or not to kind of go for it or break the team entirely down. And it seems like with them still kind of lingering, you know, six, seven games out of the wild card, he kind of just, just played it safe, got, got rid of the guys that, you know, he needed to get rid of and get some value, but didn't totally break the team down. It seems like he kind of played it safe. Yeah, he did. He uh, kind of stayed on the fence on that one, that uh, he didn't totally commit to either direction to completely breaking the team down in the fire sale. Uh, and he also, you know, he didn't um, try to keep it together and keep Beltran and K-Rod here and maybe even um, uh, bring in some guys, you know, uh, that would uh, try to bring some the miracle Mets back of 2011. So, <laughs> Um, so it, it really did feel like they went halfway with it, which yeah. you know has may not be in the long run. In retrospect, may may not be, be the right way to play this. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess though the other way you could also think about it too is who else were they going to be able to trade and get something in return for? You know, uh, I, I just don't know who else out there they would have really gotten some you know good value for. Yeah, I think that's the issue that um, trading guys like Capuano, Harris, or Hairston, those types of guys, all it was going to be was just unloading salary, really. You're not going to be getting uh, anything of real value in return. So right, I, guess, right. I guess that was probably the issue. Right, right. And so, uh, you know, the last thing I, I, I want to chat about today is, is David Wright. Uh, if I'm correct, I think that everyone from that team that went to the playoffs – in 2006 is is now gone with the exception of Wright and Reyes. I, I believe that's right. And, you know, there's always been talk over the years is, is can David Wright lead this team? Can he be the leader? And, you know, I guess the two loudest voices or, or the two uh, kind of biggest uh, presence on the team, there have been the last 
four or five years were Carlos Delgado and Carlos Beltran, and now both of those are gone. So if, if Wright is ever going to be kind of the true leader of the team, I would think now is the time. I mean, what what, what are your thoughts on Wright and, and being the leader of this team now and, and into the future for the next uh, few years? It certainly looks like that's going to be the case. You know, obviously Jose Reyes doesn't uh, have a contract after this year. So who knows if he's going to be back. And I think Jose Reyes is the longest tenured Met at the moment. Mm -hmm. So if uh, Reyes isn't back, this is absolutely 100% David Wright's team. And uh, he's going to need to step up and show it next year. Yeah, and, and, you know, it's good to see since he's been back, he's really been on a tear. Uh, you know, even, you know, since you know, before Beltran left and now even so still afterwards uh, batting fourth in that lineup, uh, he's really been hitting the ball really well, swinging a good bat. Um, so, you know, hopefully that play will continue. And, I, and, I, and I'm interested to see if, if he really kind of takes hold of this team. Yeah, me too. And, and uh, on that topic of him coming back, it looks like he shortened up a swing a little bit from what it was uh, maybe a year or really even two years ago, mm -hmm. where his swing really got really long. And it uh, looks like he shortened it up, and, and he's really, uh, really been hitting well. That's interesting. I haven't noticed that. I'll have to pay attention to that. And I'm wondering if maybe that has something to do with the injury as well, too. You know? That's a good question. It very well could. Yep, yep, yep. Well, hey, Dave, uh, thanks for joining me tonight for our weekly chat. And for those of you watching this video, Dave and I are going to do, be doing a live Ustream chat this coming Tuesday uh, for the, during the Mets game. So look out for, for that link on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks, Dave. Thank you.